Well, play of the week is back in 2019. You may remember this, the reverse touchdown pass from Iota. Last season's play of the year, the Bulldogs became a play of the week staple a season go. We'll use this time here in the final block each week to show you our three nominees. You'll then be able to vote for them on KTC as soon as the show is over. You'll get one vote per day, and we'll have the winner Sunday night at 10 o'clock. The play of the week, just one of this year's changes to the show. Our overtime web show is now a thing of the past. But some of the new things that we will bring back are things like Beyond the Huddle, Play of the Night, and our Game of the Week Rewind will air during the show, Band of the Week as well. The show, which now begins at 10.30 sharp. That's a few minutes sooner this fall. And, of course, Seth, one final block to go here on Friday Night Football. A few more teams to talk about, a few more districts to peek at. And let's start with our final 4A district, District 6-4A. Yeah, that's where Opelousas resides. And last season, this team ended a 14-year postseason drought, but lost that opening round game to a very tough Neville. Very tough. Opelousas on their home turf at Donald Gardner facing Port Barry. And right here we have the handoff to the running back, number seven. And Opelousas returns a wealth of experience, returning 15 total starters. With that kind of experience, maybe a 15-year playoff winning streak is next to fall. You know, we're going to start off uh, fall scrimmage against rain. And I'm sure we're going to make 20, 25 mistakes, mental mistakes, errors. And hopefully by the jam, we will cut that down to 12. And hopefully by the time we hit the first week, we'll cut that down to five or six mistakes. And as long as we continue to improve and never be satisfied, keep striving to be the best we can be. And that's always going to be our goal. With the reigning district champ St. Martinville now in 3A, the throne is vacant in 6-4A. Brobridge finished second a year ago and would stand to be a favorite, but Cecilia Livonia and Opelousas will all be in contention for this district. I think because of Brobridge youth, youth, this could actually be one of the more open and competitive districts we see in a kid in this season. That certainly could be the case. District 4-1A loses their district champ and undefeated St. Edmund. Returning, Basile is one of the favorites after finishing second in the district last year and reaching the quarterfinals. Gaidon joins the group after pulling off their first playoff victory ever. Also, Elton will look to bounce back from a 3-8 record. St. Ed's instead, though, moves over to District 5-1A, where there could be a potential log jam at the top of this one between the Blue Jays, Opelousas Catholic, and Sacred Heart. The Vikings are looking to repeat as district champs for the first time since the 70s. And in District 8-1A, Vermilion Catholic can smile as not just a district favorite, maybe a Division 4 favorite. The Eagles played St. Ed's tonight. Drew Leger throwing it down the center of the field to Joshua Sagreira, and he runs it in for a touchdown. Eagles up six. The past two years, the Eagles have finished second in the district to LCA and have made it to the state semifinals with the Knights out. Perhaps it's time for the screaming Eagles to fly. It's, uh, it's definitely what we all want. Um, that's our biggest goal, of course. Um, we, we're not going to stop until we get there. We're right there, and, you know, to make that next step, I think we're in the right process. And I tell my kids all the time, it's a process. Trust the process. And I, I think they have bought in, and we're, we're right there. Vermillion Catholic is the clear favorite in 8-1-A, but Central Catholic did finish 4-2 in the district. Highland Baptist will look to rebuild after finishing 0-10 as former longtime niche head coach Rick Hudson takes over with the Bears. Some final notes, some things we're watching this season. We'll talk about it here for another minute or so. How the new districts will impact Eunice and Elsie, a big question for those defending champs. Does Jennings bounce back after a rare down year? And despite winning 19 games, one of the things I'm more intrigued about how can St. Edmund and will St. Edmund keep it rolling under new head coach Terry Shiver? He's installing a new offense, an old school offense in the, from the past, going new school, going spread. How tough of a transition can that be for a player who's, who's used to that wing tee and now all of a sudden it's, it's modern 2019 football? Well, it's all about your personnel and it's all about the guys that you have. And to be honest, in the district that they're in, um, maybe that could work. You know, you're in a district with Opelousas Catholic. You're in a district with Sacred Heart of Ville Platte. Those are teams that are a little bit more traditional, but they still have some spread principles, I guess, to themselves as well. And so for me, while you're paying attention to the St. Ed's offense, I just think that district as a whole is really, really interesting. For the last couple years, it's been Opelousas Catholic and Catholic Point Capi. Now that Catholic Point Capi moves out of that district, those three teams at the top could make for a very competitive down the stretch when it comes to whoever is to win that district crown. Yeah, I think it's always interesting, though, when, when you take a team who won 19 games and are a head coach and you just, you just 
blank the slate. That's so tough. Andy Hargrove did a really good job with that program. Change always tough. So I'll be really intrigued to see what St. Ed can do. Who's a is, is there a team? And I'm putting you on the spot. We haven't really yes. talked about this. Is there a team that we're sleeping on? I would say Lafayette. You know, I think we've talked about that a little bit, but uh, I think Lafayette has all of the tools to. I don't. I'm not saying that they're going to be district champs, but I think that if they went 500, if they went above 500, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I like what Rob Poole's been building over the last couple of years, and um, I think that this might be the year that they shock a few people. Yeah, I know we've talked that I think six wins, very possible for mm-hmm. the Lions. We've looked at the schedule. We've started doing some, some punch sheets, but some of that's going to have to do with the unknown. You know, how does Southside perform in the first year? That's a real wild card what Southside can do. They've never played a varsity schedule. They've been playing teams like Opelousas Catholic and, and they're playing these JV schedules. Like you really don't know what they're going to be until they line up and they go head to head. And let me tell you something. I was at Cajun Field today for the Notre Dame Southside game. Southside didn't look bad. And that is a very good team in Notre Dame that makes a lot of very things good that team. are bigger than them not look so big. And so for Southside to hang, I know it's a I know it's a jamboree and maybe there's some other factors there, but still for them to come out like that, they forced a fumble right here at the beginning of the second half that set them up for that touchdown to make it 14-14. And so, uh, of course, I'd be, I'd be really interested to see them. I know you have a, a sleeper pick as well. Yeah, I think Como. It's one of the teams we've talked about. I think Como is a sleeper pick a little bit. I think that's a team that's really developed over the last season. But we have one more minute left. One final question I do want to ask you. And I want to ask you about the three defending champs, Eunice, LCA, Notre Dame. Who's the one team that, that you think will most definitely repeat? Most definitely repeat? Okay, I'm not, not doing Who's the most, the most likely to repeat? The most likely to repeat, I believe, is Notre Dame just because of the pieces that they have back in place. But obviously, LCA is going to have a lot to say oh, about yeah, that. Only one of those teams can only win. Only one of those teams can win. <laughs> only one of those teams can win. Of course, that all starts next week. Meaningful football on Thursday and Friday night. It is good to have high school football yes, finally indeed. back set. That is a wrap for our preview show. Next week, Friday night football, we'll have the fields of the regular season as the games begin that finally matter. For Bree Aldridge, he's Seth Lewis. I'm Andrew Clay. We appreciate you watching us. We'll see you next week.